I want to teach you how to construct a geologic cross-section with a topographic profile from a geologic map. So the idea here is that we have a geologic map, and if we look at it, um, a couple things we notice. We have several units marked here, and that's in no particular order. So this asterisk, the squiggle, this kind of banana moon shape, and this spiral. And so if we identify those units, we can find the spiral here, here's the asterisk, here's our moon up here and at the top, and then a little squiggly one down here. And so these are separated by contacts, and so we're going to assume these are like sedimentary units, uh, most likely. And so these solid lines are contacts. And then we also have little dotted lines, which are going to be our contours. And so they're labeled 50, 200, 250, etc. And um, that's a contour interval of 50 feet. So I should make that clear. That's feet. All right, so I'll make that assumption. We also see a couple other things. We see a couple strike and dip symbols here. So this asterisk unit is striking kind of northeast, southwest um, in both locations. And then the dip is going toward the center of whatever the structure is um, at a 45 degree angle. Um, and the directions would probably say something like, you know, assume all of the beds in the lower right corner or the southeast corner are dipping just like the asterisk one there. And then the same thing about the north um, west corner. So we're going to make that assumption as well. I also see that I've got a little scale bar at the bottom. So this isn't like a true map. It's just something easy for me to uh, illustrate with. But we're going to say that this amount here is going to be 100 feet. Um, so across the map, 100 feet is represented by each of these kind of bars. Um, and then the final thing that I see is this point A and B are marked on there. And so what will happen is we'll say let's create a geologic cross section with a topographic profile um, across from A to B. Um, so what you're going to want to do typically is make a line that traces across there with the ruler. Um, and, you know, some kind of pencil. And then we're going to get a strip of paper. So I have my strip of paper. And I've made it exactly the length of that there. Um, but yours can go beyond that. I'm just doing it because the dry erase marker. And if it is beyond that, what you would, first thing you want to do is you want to indicate that where the A falls and where the B falls. So let's say that your paper was longer. You would make a little tick mark here and put A. And if the paper went beyond there, you would make a tick mark there and put B. So that every time you line up your paper, um, it's going to be lined up in the exact same spot. Okay, so now I have a piece of paper that's the width of this section that I'm going to be drawing. And you'll notice over here, I have this um, kind of template already drawn, and I pre-filled it out a bit. Um, you'll notice it's the same length as that line, so that's going to be really important to do that. And in this case, um, because of the scale I've chosen, 100 feet is going to be represented across the bottom here. So it's about 500 feet or so across that line. Um, and then we're also going to see that my vertical axis, I've already went ahead and labeled with the appropriate values. So I noticed that I had um, values from 150 to 450. Um, I'm not my B line or my line doesn't cross anywhere near the 450. So I started at zero and went up and ended up at 400. That's going to catch all the contours that I need to that actually cross this line. That'll make more sec um, sense in a second. All right, so um, I also want to designate that the left-hand side of this is the A point and the right-hand side is going to be the B point. Because Technically, you could do it backwards, but that would be a little bit weird. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to first start to mess with my um, the actual topographic profile. So that's going to be the contour lines. That's going to be the easiest thing typically to start with. Okay, so I'm going to put my paper across here and hopefully not erase too many things in the process. And I'm going to make a little tick mark there. Anywhere that the contour crosses my line, I want to make a mark. All right. So I'll make this a little bit bigger probably. But now I have these marks here. And I'm going to notice that these first two are the 200 foot. It crosses twice. So on mine, I would label 200 and 200. And then I would notice that the next one I crossed was this 250, then a 300, then a 350. So I would label that 250, 300, 
and 350. Okay, so you'll have to trust me that's what that says there. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my piece of paper and I'm gonna put it across the bottom of my cross section. And I'm going to say, okay, there's a 200 foot contour mark here. So I'm gonna go up to 200 and make a dot. And then same thing here, a 200. And this again is the elevation, the topographic profile. So the shape of the land surface. I'm gonna go, go above the 250, make a dot there. Go above the 300, make sure it lines up with my 300 there. And then 350, make sure it lines up with my 350 there. Okay. So these are the elevations as I traverse from A to B. So I need to connect my line. So what I'm gonna notice is I need to figure out, is this coming up like this or down like that, right? And so we can look at it here. If I go between that first contour and the point A, I would notice that I'm increasing in my contour value, so 200 to 250. So this has to be above 200. So it would be coming down, and I don't wanna to get too close to the three, or the 250, because then it would have picked up another contour there. So I'm gonna start it between the 200 and 250, come down, and I'm going to swoop down and then come back up. And again, I don't wanna to get too low. If I get too low here, I would have picked up another contour there. So I, I don't wanna get into that 150 range. And I'm gonna come here and connect the rest of these. Same thing, I don't wanna to go too high because I didn't pick up that 400 foot contour interval there. So now this is my land surface. So um, that's successful. And so now what we wanna do, so we wanna come back here and do the same thing, but with the actual geologic units. So if I come and put my paper across here, what I'm gonna notice is that my geologic units, I'm gonna use a red pen, come here, 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 and here. And if I notate what those are, between these two lines, it was an asterisk. Between these two lines, I have my spiral. Between these two lines, uh, I'd have to look down, but I would find out that it's an asterisk. And then between these two lines, it's a moon. Um, and so the only other one I have over here, this is a moon as well. So I did that backwards, so that's okay. All right, so now I can put these onto my map here. Um, so I'm gonna do the same thing. And this is easier to maybe slide it up a little bit. Okay, we're ready to make our mark. Um, so I noticed that my first bed intersected here on the surface, my next one intersected here on the surface, my next one intersected here on the surface, and my last one, if I go straight up, intersected here. So now I have to determine what direction the beds were tilted, or if they were vertical or horizontal or whatever the case might be. And so, of course, my strike and dip indicates that this asterisk bed which um, if I look, I should have added that on there. So this is going to be my asterisk unit. This is gonna be my spiral unit. Here's my little crescent banana unit. Here is my um, asterisk unit. And then here's my little moon um, banana unit. Okay, so if I look back over here, I know that my asterisks were striking actually uh, perpendicular to this line here, which is good, so it crosses right through it, and it's dipping toward the center, or to the right there. And so what I would wanna do, and it's at 45 degrees, here's my asterisk unit, I would dip about 45 degrees and come down and do something like that. I'm not gonna go too far, because I don't know how far that goes, because I know that my other asterisk unit on the right-hand side, so this one here, is dipping the other direction, so in toward the center. So I would do the same thing here, 45 degrees, and then I do my, oops, do my 45 degrees coming in something like that. All right, so now I'm going to see where these intersect and probably kind of smooth those out a little bit. This one would come down and maybe swoop in something like that. And so here's my asterisk unit, um, and then my little spirally unit, 
and then I have my crescent moon. And of course we have our little squiggly down here, so you would assume that the moon unit doesn't go forever. So I'd probably just guess right now and put a line there and then do my little squiggle, right? Because the moon or the squiggle doesn't get to that um, AB line. We'd have to extend our map further to pick up where that would intersect that, okay? So, and then I would probably assume there's another one down here and do my little squiggle there. So now I have my geologic map. I can see that I've actually got this fold in here. And if I wanted to, I could put these in order. So we know that if we were to flatten our fold out and go from the bottom up, um, if we went oldest to youngest, so I would do old and then to young here. If I were to order those, my oldest would be my little squiggles. The next one up would be my little crescent moon. The next one up would be my asterisk. And then the top one would be um, my little spiral. So different order than was presented over here in the key because now I actually know what was oldest to youngest. The last thing is um, sometimes we want to make sure that the vertical expression is the same as the horizontal expression on a cross section so that it reflects um, no, no vertical exaggeration um, or a horizontal exaggeration, right? You want them to be the same. So to do that, in this case, um, this is 100 feet across my map. It's also 100 feet across here. You would want to make the vertical axis the same. And you can see that the way I did that, it's approximately the same. So there is no vertical exaggeration here. It's just 100 feet laterally represents 100 feet vertically. But let's say that if this value was different, if this value had been something like um, 50 feet, and so that now this is 50 feet, you would see that um, this is 50 feet laterally, but this is 100 feet vertically. So you'd have a two times exaggeration there. If you wanted to fix that, what you would need to do is either compress this down, so each of these would be worth um, instead of 50, it would be 100, uh, 200, 300, so you'd compress this down, or you would make your cross-section much wider to be able to make, once again, the vertical value the same as the horizontal value. Now, sometimes that's not possible because we're covering way too big of an area, so your um, vertical axis wouldn't make sense, and so that's when we talk about vertical exaggeration, which is another topic that um, we'll have to address a different day. But at least you understand um, how to make these actually match so that there's no vertical exaggeration.